Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. In this unboxing video, we're going to be checking out the expansion for Arkham Horror 3rd Edition called Under Dark Waves. This comes from Fantasy Flight Games. And if you haven't checked out a playthrough of this particular game, you want to find out more about how it actually plays and flows, check the link in the top right hand corner right now. It'll take you to my showcase where I covered content from the base game. So without further ado, in this video, we're going to flip this box over take a look at the exterior and then we're going to check out all the components inside terror from the depths the decrepit village of innsmouth creaks under the weight of growing corruption the mist shrouded streets of seaside kingsport hide ancient mysteries the tide is rising under Dark Ways brings your investigation to Innsmouth and Kingsport with new neighborhoods, scenarios, investigators, monsters, and equipment for Arkham Horror. Stave off encroaching terror, trespass in Devil Reef or Strange High House, and test your fortune against the tyrants of the deep. First thing you'll find inside the box is the Under Dark Waves rule book, and we'll go through a number of the pages here to get a good idea. We've got the Under Dark Waves narrative, the expansion overview, using this expansion is important, and then and of course the icon most fantasy flight games that have expansions have icons you can help to separate things out later on if you wish components are listed out here but we'll be taking a closer look at all of them as we go along expansion rules specific to map tiles neighborhood tiles encounter icons here travel routes a specific thing for this expansion mysteries another thing to dive into within this expansion heading over to the next page one thing i really like about these rule books by the way is the artwork that also finds itself inside these pages always absolutely beautiful and terrifying at the same time terror uh, speaking of terror right here on this section here with the terror tokens encounters we got monsters on this side and archiving of cards and you can see we're almost near the end of the rulebook already attachments encounter abilities double-sided cards event deck adding a title to a map tainting condition and modifying the mythos cup and that's going to lead you basically to the very back here so we've got clarifications on clues monster cards other things that have to do with this expansion, again with some beautiful artwork, then some actual game modes, story mode, challenge mode, inevitable mode, that's pretty cool. So it says Underwater Dark Waves adds optional game modes to Arkham Horror that allow players to either adjust the difficulty of the game or to link multiple scenarios together into a series of games of escalating difficulty. Now this is really cool because most Arkham Horror games, and even when you lean towards the Eldritch Horror side of things, they didn't have all that much tying them together. Although I believe the last iteration of Eldritch Horror, if I remember correctly, tried to add in some type of campaign-ish or you know, scenario connection there. Uh, but in this case, it looks like they've got an extra step, which is really exciting to dive into. And finally, on the back of the book, you got the quick reference, encounter icons, mythos token, your travel route type. So we've got a country road, ferry terminal, and train platform. Also, you'll notice at the back of most of Fantasy Flight's products now going forward, if not all of them, they no longer mention the Fantasy Flight game's specific sleeves. They now talk about game genic, and it shows right there which number and color you need to get in order to sleeve your game. Moving right along to the punch boards, there are a couple of them. So you can see right here, we have all of these specific tiles, which are considered the travel route tiles. We've also got a number of these tokens all the way around. These are terror tokens. There's going to be 18 of them. We've also got a bunch of markers. Some of the tokens you remember from the base game, most likely. We'll go ahead and take a look at the back of this as well. And on the opposite side, of course, as with all of these locations, we now have Innsmouth Shore adding to the fray. And you can see here some very cool looking artwork for the different travel routes. You've got boats and vehicles showing up. I'll just do a quick spin so you can see it from all angles. You also have Silas here in the middle as an investigator. We'll head to the next tile underneath. We have Central Kingsport and also a number of different investigators joining the fray here, plus some health as well as some more terror tokens, more travel route tokens. There's also a mystery tile in this as well. And if I'm not mistaken, that mystery tile is this one right here. And it states Devil Reef on this one side. And if we flip it over to the opposite side, You'll see here that that mystery tile has, and these things want to come right out of the punch board, it says Strange High House. On the opposite side over here, Innsmouth Village. 
Next up inside the box are a whole bunch of cards, and I'm talking some serious stacks of cards. Two gigantic piles worth of them, plus these mini cards as well, and then a whole bunch of investigator cards, and of course, some of the nasty individuals you're gonna be running into while playing the game. For investigators, we have Ashcan Pete, Carson, Charlie Kane, Father Mateo, Patrice, Silas, Stella Clark, Zoe. Yeah, we're going to start with Zoe for the back side of the card, for the story, starting possessions, as well as what role, whether it's primary or secondary, this character can have. Stella's, Silas, Patrice, Father Mateo, Charlie Kane, Carson, Ashcan Pete. And of course, it wouldn't be an expansion for Arkham Horror if it didn't have scenarios. You can see the beautiful artwork next to each one of them as I go through the four. And by beautiful, I mean extremely creepy. Next up, let's go through all the mini cards. There are quite a bit. Let's see, we got Duke here, a guitar for Pete, Wander Talent, Anticipation, as you wish, prepared for anything. What I really love, and I've said this before about third edition, is the fact that the majority of the card is taken up by artwork. Uh, there still is more than enough room for these cards to have the abilities listed on them and to easily read them and see them, but it's just nice to have that there just to kind of pull you in and immerse you even more in what's going on here. Do apologize every once in a while, my thumb is going to cover a little bit of the ability that is almost impossible to avoid. I'll do my best to not cover up the ability. If you want to pause the screen to read a particular one, you definitely can. That's pretty cool looking weapon. Zoe's cross. Some monsters now. Yikes. Cruel Slayer. All oh, these monsters look awesome. Some of them are pretty nasty looking. Got your conditions here, tainted. Bunch of tainted conditions actually. Dark packed. Baseball bat, nice. Encyclopedia, ground pepper, healing elixir, astral projection, hunter's insight, death. Death, <laughs> sounds great. I have appraisal, four of cups, friend of a friend, golden crown, harpoon, hotel porter, kerosene. Lucky coin, nice. Finally, Twisted Flesh. Now I'm risking running into spoiler territory here with the number of cards, especially the standard size cards that come in this. All of these are gonna tie back to the scenarios in the game and all kinds of other wonderful goodies that you are very familiar with if you've seen my playthrough or played through the game yourself. So I'm not gonna really just sit on any one of these cards particularly, but I'm just gonna show you the amount of them, which just by sheer volume is pretty impressive for this expansion. This is a massive pile of cards. This is just one of two piles of cards uh, that's gonna get added into your game. And again, I won't really be stopping on any of these because I don't really want to ruin anything for you. Plus, you'd have to sit there and read all of these to really get anything out of them, but there is a lot here to add into the game if you have the base ready. And you do need the base game to enjoy this. You'll see that the numbers pick up from where the last ones ended off, and you can just go ahead and add these cards into your pile. And of course, the rules will instruct you as to how to do so. So like I said, I was not kidding. There is tons, like here's the south side getting some additions, Rivertown, like all these other locations we've seen from before, Miskatonic, Innsmouth, like all of them getting additional extra cards. 
And then you've got these travel route cards, which are brand new for this expansion, completely worth highlighting. So these are where I'll probably spend some time on the opposite side showing you guys what these are all about. These, I believe, tie to mysteries, although I'll have to double check that to be 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure on that. And then of course it moves into more of these location cards for the new locations. There should be four sets of these, I imagine, for each of the tiles we took a look at uh, for both sides. And then we got some newspapers here. All kinds of, actually this could be end up being the mystery card actually. So I have to dig into that a little bit further and more and more cards, just tons of them. This is such a mitt full of cards. It's hard to actually keep them under control. Uh, but again, here's a whole bunch more. We'll go into the uh, orange cards here. Feeding Frenzy. I'll give you an idea of like what one of them looks like if you want to pause the screen to read it. There's just all kinds of them. Weather keeps on the sunny side. These are the newspapers, I imagine. These ones are... Backs look like that. All the location-based tiles. Now this, I'm not 100% sure which one's this for, but this is the Devil's Reef, and I remember the Devil's Reef being on that token that was considered to be cons uh, called a mystery. Uh, so it, it's possible that this is where all these will come in to play. And you got more through this deck as well. Like, just tons of narrative behind all this. And this is what Arkham Horror was known for. The second edition had so much content. If you were into the original game and you had everything, the stacks of cards that you had available to you to draw from were absolutely ridiculous in size. And that's going to wrap up this unboxing for Under Dark Waves, an additional expansion for Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. A big thank you to my Patreon community for selecting this one by voting to choose this unboxing. If you want to become a part Part of that Patreon community and have a say in the content that comes out in the channel as well as behind the scenes information and early access to gameplay, definitely check out the link to that in the pinned comment. Thank you guys again for watching and as always, keep on rolling solo!